Hello everybody, it's Miss Trish. I am here with the Unitarian Universalist Church of St. Petersburg's UU Unicorns group of kindergarten through third graders. And I have our lesson for May the 3rd. I'm going to light our chalice so we can get started. Love is the spirit of this church and service its law. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. So the theme for the week is the door of shelter. May nothing evil cross this door. And we're going to explore ways that thresholds protect us. We also have a calendar connection. Beltane from the Wiccan tradition falls on May the 1st and people who follow the Wiccan spiritual path are guided by nature and they seek to live in harmony with nature and the deities or gods and god goddesses that represents aspects of nature. And we have a wonder box over here. And in the wonder box is something that will help us talk about our theme. Let's see what it is. Oh. It's a hymnal. I wonder what that has to do with thresholds. Hmm. Well, let's see. The very first hymn in this book is called May nothing evil cross this door. And if I can find it, I'll show it to you. There it is. I'll read the words of this to you. But when Unitarian Universalists open a hymnal, it's kind of like opening a door and singing is like the threshold we cross over from one state of mind to another state of mind. The words of that hymn say, May nothing evil cross this door, and may ill fortune never pry about these windows. May the roar and rain go by. Strengthened by faith, these rafters will withstand the battering of the storm. This hearth, though all the world grow chill, will keep us warm. Peace shall walk softly through these rooms, touching our lips with holy wine, till every casual corner blooms into a shrine. Laughter shall drown the raucous shout, and though these sheltering walls are thin, may they be strong to keep hate out and hold love in. That song is kind of like a blessing to our house and to the threshold. And in the Wiccan tradition, they often cast a protective circle. And there are different ways you can do that. You can just imagine that there's a protective circle around you. You can take a little mirror and face the reflection away from you so that any bad energy coming your way bounces off and heads the other direction. You can actually turn sideways if any aggression comes towards you so the energy goes right past you. Or you could go outside with a big piece of chalk and draw a big circle and sit in the middle of it and feel very safe and protected inside. In Wicca, they also have a tradition of hanging a horseshoe above your threshold or above your front door. And American folklore goes that the horseshoe has to be up like this so that the luck stays inside because if it's down all the luck drains out. 
and in early May, the Wiccan celebration called Beltane is part of the Wheel of the Year to celebrate the spring and growing things as it moves to the threshold of summer. We're going to actually do a house blessing in the Wicca tradition, and so you'll need to bring together some things to make this ritual or the ceremony very special. And before our meditation, you can turn the video off for a couple minutes and go gather whatever you can find of the list of things I'll give you, and then come back and get comfortable. So here's the list of things. You're going to need a big piece of paper, well, just a regular copy paper, and you're going to draw a big circle on it, as big as will fit on your paper. To draw this one, I used a bowl that I found in the kitchen, but you could use a paper plate or anything round that'll fit on your piece of paper, or not trace around anything, just draw it freehand. It doesn't have to be perfect. Also, a feather, if you've got one, the feather will represent the air. A candle, it doesn't have to be a wax candle like mine. It could be a battery operated candle to represent the light, the heat, the hearth in our homes. A bit of soil or dirt that represents the ground of Mother Earth, the skin of Mother Earth. Some water represents the fluids and the blood of Mother Earth. You'll need something in the shape of a heart I have this beautiful stone. You could have a cut out piece of paper. Anything in the shape of a heart will do. A piece of jewelry. That represents spirit. The spirit of the human being. The spirit of Mother Earth. The great spirit. All spirit. And if you like, you can bring a representation of an animal to me, the horse has always been very special. Ever since I was a child, I dreamed of being a horse, and I could feel myself in the strong body of a horse out on the plains, wild and free. So I'm inviting the horse to my ritual. Many spiritual traditions have ceremonies to bless or cleanse a house. The word bless is taken from the root word blood. This dates back a really long time ago, and back then they would sprinkle some blood on the altar as an offering to the divine. And even that, that sounds kind of gross to us now, but if you think of it, blood was the most precious thing they could offer to the God of nature, to the deities. Blood represents the essence of life. To bless means to invoke the best things in life, including safety, joy, spiritual growth. We can bless our loved ones, our pets, ourselves, and of course, our homes. We can focus on the threshold of our home if we'd like to for this ritual we're going to do together. And you can get the feeling going in you if you want to make some rhythmic music, like maybe clapping, to call the deities, to center ourselves, to get in the right mood. So you put your paper in front of you. This is the circle you cast for the blessing. and you hold each item 
and think about the part of the blood that will nourish the energy of this blessing. The items represent a guardian that protects the threshold between the worlds. These are natural spirits, elemental spirits, or perhaps spirits that walk with you as companions or guides. You can also have an animal totem, like the horse that I'm going to bring. And all of these energies will attend your ritual. So take a few minutes to go and gather the things that I mentioned, the paper for the circle, the feather, the water, the earth, the candle, the heart shape for spirit, and if you like you could bring an animal toy or piece of jewelry to represent your animal totem. And then once you've got them, come back and get comfortable. I'm ready to start. So I bless this place by air, by the breath of songs, talking with friends, and the slow in and out breathing during meditation or prayers. I put each item in the circle of protection, of power. I bless this place by the soil that composes the skin of Mother Earth from which our food grows to nourish our bodies. I bless this place, place by the hearth, by the fire, by the warmth at the center of our homes that keeps our food warm and warms our body when it's cold outside. I bless this place by the water, the water so necessary to our lives. It falls from the sky, flows through the rivers, it courses through our bodies. I invite my animal totem to represent the animal kingdom to whom we owe so much, to whom we are responsible. We must keep them safe. I invite spirit in the shape of a heart Spirit of humans, Spirit of Mother Earth, Great Spirit, the One Spirit, into the center of our circle. Thank you, Great Spirit, for everything that exists. Without Spirit, nothing exists. Thank you. This is the story of the Green Man, and he is part of the Wicca tradition. Once upon a time, there lived a rich, vain young squire. There he is. Servants prepared his favorite food each day. His wish was granted. One of the young man's favorite things to do was to ride through the woods that were part of his kingdom, hunting small animals for sport. He thought that the woods and all its creatures belonged to him, and he could do as he pleased with them. The people of the village had a very different idea about the woods. The woods provided a home to all the creatures that lived there, chipmunks, birds, squirrels, rabbits, deer, and wild pigs. They told their children a story about a green man who lived in the woods and cared for all the small creatures. They even said he watched out for children in the woods. The villagers faithfully left out food on winter's night 
for the green man to eat. The squire thought that was ridiculous. One autumn day, the squire decided to go out on a hunt, and he called all of his servants to saddle up the horses and get their riding clothes on. They were going into the woods. They rode into the woods, trampling nests and dens as they went, sending dogs out ahead to chase small animals out of their homes so they could be easily hunted. After a time, the squire became separated from the rest of his hunting party. He was looking for them when he came upon a pond, a beautiful, clear, cool pond. How clever of me to have a pond in my woods to refresh myself, he said. The young man began to remove all of his fine clothing, his shoes, his hat, his jacket, his shirt, his pants, his socks. He laid his clothes neatly by the edge of the pond, all folded up, and then he jumped into the water for a cool swim. He swam back and forth, enjoying himself immensely. While he was swimming and splashing away, a hand reached out from behind a tree and took his clothing and led his horse away. When the squire got out of the water, he discovered that he had nothing to wear except a piece of rope. He took the rope and fashioned some leaves to make a cover-up. When his hunting party came back to look for him, he was embarrassed to be seen with nothing but leaves on, so he hid from them. At night, the squire went looking for some shelter, and he stumbled into a cave. He didn't sleep much that night. It was dark, and he was frightened, and he kept hearing animal noises all night. He thought he saw something near the entrance of the cave with horns and glittering eyes. In the morning, when the daylight came, he saw that he was not alone in the cave. There was a goat there, and a chicken, and a gourd for holding water. Someone had been living in that cave. He found some grass for the goat and feed for the chicken. He discovered some grains that he could eat as well. In time, he settled down into a comfortable life of feeding the animals and going into the forest, and he made his garment with more leaves. He ate eggs from the hens and drank milk from the goats, and he covered his hands with mud to prevent stings when he reached into a beehive for honey to eat. He became acquainted with all the small woodland creatures, and he cared for them, helping them over swollen streams when the heavy rains fell, making sure they had food for water, and sheltering them in the cave on chilly nights. One day he came upon two small children trapped by a wild pig threatening to bite them. When he had chased the pig off, they looked at him. There he was, covered head to toe with leaves and mud, with a wild-looking beard and hair. Are you the green man? they asked. I guess I am said the man, who no longer looked anything like a squire. When winter came, the green man was happy to go into the village at night and take the food the villagers had left out for him, and he shared it with his animal friends. A whole year passed peacefully until one warm day a hunting party came through the woods. The green man hid behind a tree to watch. A rich young man, a squire perhaps, became separated from his hunting group and decided to take a swim in the clear, cool pond. He took off his clothes, folded them neatly, and left them under a tree.
The green man reached out a hand and took the clothes and the horse, leaving behind his garment of leaves and a coil of rope. He used a sharp stick to trim his hair and beard, and he rode back into town to his parents' home. He returned to his rich life as before, but he was a changed man because of how he learned to live with Mother, Ner Mother Earth and the creatures of the forest. So now for a little fun, I'm going to show you how to make a green man mask. Here's one that I made. Leaves all over my face. So here's what you need. You can actually download a template like this for the mask. If you go onto Google and you put printable mask template, you can find this exact one or lots of other ones. Just take a look and see if you like the size of it and resize it on the paper before you print it. You will need a paper plate. So once I got it cut out, I taped it to my paper plate. I drew around it and then I cut out the paper plate because the paper plate is going to be stiff enough to take the glue for the, the leaves. And once you get it cut out, don't forget to punch the holes in the sides for the shoe strings or whatever kind of string you want to use because once you get the leaves glued on, you can't punch the hole anymore. So punch the hole before you glue the leaves. You can draw the leaves onto green construction paper or, or yellow or red, whatever color you like. I used green because it's summer and everything's green. If you don't want to draw yourself, you can download some printable leaves. Just put printable leaves template and you can find this one or other ones just like it or even better. And you can color them green like I did and then you can pretend like you're the green man. So that is our lesson for the week. So remember the blessing we gave our threshold when you come and go this week. And I'm going to extinguish our chalice. And I'm going to say, Namaste. Hope to see you soon. Stay safe. Love you all. Bye.